Welcome back. So, um, I did a lot of things uh, in between episodes. Um, first of all, I went uh, shopping and yeah, I was uh, lacking a bit of money, so I also went on a bit of a uh, uh, stealing spree. <laughs> uh, I uh, traveled back to the Lady Vengeance and uh, changed my skill setup, my civil abilities, all into thievery on both characters and uh, proceeded to steal pretty much um, everything from um, most of the traders. And uh, then I went ahead, uh, went back and put all of my points into bartering and sold all that stuff and bought. And anyway, I've got a lot of stuff and I've got a lot of money is uh, the quintessence. So, um, Beast has a new weapon. We've got a bit of new items. I think the bird we bought last time. Don't know if there's anything else different around here. Don't know. Um, but we've got a new sword, which is really, really good. Plus six initiative is a lot. Warfare strength is amazing. And on Lose, uh, um yeah, I found that uh, new skill books were on sale since we hit level 10 and as you can see I did um, change my skill set a little bit. Um, I changed my mind um, while I was doing shopping and considering um, a few things. Uh, I will stay a mage for now. Maybe later I'll change if I don't like it, but with the new spells, um, yeah, I, I kind of want to uh, try out all those new spells. So for now, um, I'd stay a mage and I'd stay uh, pyrokinetic and uh, summoning mostly and necromancer. So, what uh, did I change in my skill set? Uh, let's start over here. We've got Dominate Might, uh, which is a summoning spell and which is extremely good. Um, it is uh, a charm spell. It works like charming arrows, but just uh, it's it's a spell. And there you actually see why archers are so so much better than everyone else because this uh, charm, this dominant mind, costs me three AP and it has five turns cooldown. Now an archer can simply use a charming arrow, which only costs two AP and has zero cooldown, which is just pff, infinitely better. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'll say for uh, say a mage for now. Then we've got Bone Cage, uh, which gives me a shit ton of physical armor and magical armor, depending on how much corpses are around. And since uh, yeah, when I need armor in a battle, they are probably this battle probably has gone on for some time, so there will be a lot of uh, corpses, and I will get a shit ton of armor. It's not that important, but uh, it might save my hide some times. Also, we have one more. Point one more spell we can set, and I go ahead with this. Now, uh, yeah, put in supercharger. Uh, since I have a lot uh, of different summons now, and I guess I'll um, change them I, uh, in fight. Uh, since you only can have one um, summon um, at a time. I guess I will start with an incarnate uh, and um, stun all of the enemies and next turn I go with something else or whatever. We'll see. Um, I also got another um, source spell which finally have come available and it is uh, Summon Fire Slug. Um, I thought let's try it out. It is a pyrokinetic spell but it's uh, summoning so perfect combination for myself. Uh, and yeah we'll see how good this works since this is the only uh, worthwhile source spell I momentarily have um, yeah I think I'll be using that a lot because bending song it sucks big time I, w I will never ever use that crap and I can actually throw this out all right uh, next up I put in bloated corpse and a new spell, Raise Bone Widow. Bone Widow is... we can just show you this one. It is a Bone Spider. It looks pretty nasty. Uh, it has a shit ton of health, does a little bit more damage than my uh, normal incarnate. And it has a couple of spells. It can teleport itself, more or less. Well, it can barrel. And it can devour corpses, which will give uh, vitality back to it and uh, give it a damage buff. 
And yeah, the incarnate we already know, but I've got a bunch of new fire spells too. Uh, fire whip, for example, it is a single target long range attack. Uh, well, long range is apparently relative. I would not consider this long range, but okay. Um, and it, yeah, it it's a single target damage. It uh, doesn't have much of uh, damage output, but it also sets blinded, which is good against uh, enemy archers. Uh, or stuff because uh, blinded means they can only attack in melee range so it can um, effectively disable enemy archers and laser ray which uh, yeah deals a shit ton of damage and looks pretty fancy too and that's it with beast we've also got a couple of new spells Finally, a bunch of new uh, mobility spells have come uh, become available. Got them all in. I hate all in. It's so goddamn useless. And uh, yeah, that's uh, Blitz Attack. It is um, well. If any one of you uh, is playing Dota, it's the ultimate of uh, Juggernaut. <laughs> it's a uh, pretty much Omni Slash. So you jump um, to a couple of targets and uh, hit them each time. And we've got Phoenix Dive, which is a teleport that also leaves uh, the surrounding area burning. And then we've got a Source Spell too, which I didn't use much in my first playthrough, but I think this might be a very, very strong combination. Um, it increases my damage um, depending on how much enemies are around. So I was thinking if there are a lot of enemies clumped together and I charge in there, um, uh, throw in thick of the fight and then enrage myself and then whirlwind, I pretty much one shot everything. <laughs> At least that's the plan. We'll uh, try this out and see if it is any good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's beast. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Also did a little more room crafting. I increased the size of my flame rune in my stuff and the uh, masterwork rune in my sword to a large rune. Um, the recipe is the same. You combine two medium runes with a pixie dust and you get a large rune. And it gives 13% instead of 11%. Yeah, that's uh, it. I also made sure that uh, Beast has more initiative than Lose. Uh, so that he um, has the first turn in uh, in combat, uh, so he can uh, disable and yeah, he has more means of disabling. Is what I was meaning to say. And yeah, let's uh, pick off uh, where we um, uh, where we ended last time, and that is uh, let's go uh, into the hatch and talk with the Meister. Yeah, this is her secret cellar, and there's the Meister. Let's see, we'll loot later. Let's talk to her first, but let's grab some sauce first. Nice. Okay. Uh, anything of interest over here? Mm, let's see later. Okay, Meister, what do we have to do to become divine? The Meister is examining her wounds, prodding at this, wincing at that. Her face seems grim as she turns to you. Do you know what it means to have the power of the divine, Godwoken? <laughs> Tell her you know less about divinity than you do about sin. Then it's time to smarten up. This responsibility isn't one of the meek, the selfish, or, in your case, the ignorant. No, becoming the divine means taking on the power of all the gods and the responsibility for all the races. The Divine was created by the gods to shelter us from the Void. The Divine cannot use her power for anything else. Hmm. <laughs> Hold up your hands. Surely you can use some power for yourself. When you become the Divine, there is no more self. For just a moment, her eyes soften as she looks at you. It is no small thing to ask, but it is your duty. Without a new Divine, Rivalon will die. Okay, let's be understanding. I mean, yeah, not you understand. 
Very well, then. Let's see if we can't snatch divinity from the jaws of the void. The ritual itself is quite simple. Drop some black root in the bowl, mix in a little blood, set the concoction aflame, and then inhale the smoke. Ignore any feelings of dizziness, burning in your lungs, or a dire sense of existential dread. They're all perfectly normal. Oh, you okay. will need to sacrifice a little sauce along the way. Everything you need is here. Ingredients in the cupboard. Sauce in the glowing fountain. Ritual in the tome by the bookcase. Even an incinerator to provide a flame. The Meister looks back at her wounds, curiously prodding them as fresh blood oozes out, staining her claws. Observes that her cuts look pretty bad. Quite. Mind you, being torn asunder by a void woken would be even more inconvenient. So if you wouldn't mind... The Meister points sharply to the ingredients cupboard. Yeah, pause for a moment. Ask if she's ever seen the ritual perform performed before. Once, although not by a god woken. My assistant did not believe that one had to be chosen by a god to become divine. She waves a bandaged hand absent-mindedly, wincing slightly. A headstrong and thoughtless girl, but the experience was... <coughs> was quite educational. From observing her, I gather that the ritual involves inhaling the smoke, a lot of screaming, and a rather sudden death. <laughs> okay, that's uh, very comforting. Um, sure. Not. It's a risk you'll have to take. I'm putting our faith in you as a risk Rivalon must take. If you need more detailed information about the ritual, see the tome on a plinth by the bookcase. But be quick about it. We do not have much time. Okay, okay. So the stuff for the ritual is in the uh, in here. Opening the door, you see a selection of ingredients, thrown together in no particular order. Look for the materials you need uh, to complete the ritual. After a quick rummage, you spot the black root, nestled between the grated dragon's tongue and drudene oil. You gather up the black root, obsidian lance and ancient bowl, and kick the door of the cupboard closed. Okay, we've got a bunch of items in our inventory now. Uh, it should be ingredients, right? Right. No, not quite right. I first need to use my, that knife uh, to cut myself and get some blood on it. There we go. Now we have a bloody obsidian lancet. Then we have to combine the blood root with the ritual bow. And the ritual bow with our blood. And that stuff needs to go into the incinerator. Where is it? Over here. Let's put it over there. And use the incinerator control valve. Well, and there we go. Use a hallucinatic, hallucinogenetic... Okay, let's try that again. Hallucinogenic. <laughs> hallucinogenic smoke cloud. As you suck the smoke deep into your lungs, your vision starts to swim and cloud. There is an intense pounding in your head, and you can feel the world fading. Hold the fumes in your lungs and ignore the thumping in your head. As the world fades away, you lose all sense of being grounded. You reach out, but you could feel yourself falling slowly, sinking into the depths of your own soul. There we are again. In the Hall of Acts. Now, what do we have here? Nothing. Nothing except myself. In Rex, for some reason. Okay, demon side myself, what do you have to tell me? Ah, there you are. Ah. I've been waiting for you. That thing doesn't speak with my voice anymore. It has a male voice now. I was worried you weren't coming. Remark that it looks fleshier than usual. What guess? Isn't that just the question? I come bearing a gift. See? Look into my eyes. Hesitate, then hold your other self's gaze from a safe distance. There. Now wait. Wait. You learn Spirit Vision. Cast the spells regularly to reveal a hidden world of ghosts lingering in the mortal realm. Yeah, that's very useful. We'll get to that after we're done. 
Ah, now speak the spell and see what I've gotten for us. Okay, we've learned a spirit vision now, which is uh, which reveals uh, ghosts, and it lasts ten turns, or I don't know, like a minute or something like that. And yeah, you should pretty much always keep this up when you're exploring the world, because you never know when you might stumble across some ghost or whatever. So he wants us to use it. Let's use it. There, that's a bit more familiar. So. Go on. Pretty fantastic, isn't it? You're a step closer toward becoming like one of them now. What does it mean, like one of whom? One of the gods, Losa dear. Come on, keep up. You can see spirits now. Try it next time you cut some innocent to bits. You'll be able to find out just what their sweet little soul thinks of you. Ask why it's given you this power. We can't let the other Godwoken outpace you, can we? They'll be meeting one of the seven, camping out within their own souls, you know. Shriveled, half-dead gods looking to steal source from their chosen, in exchange for the power to see spirits. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, not antagonize whatever that is and ask why the seven are hiding out within the other god wall. They need source. And they're running out of it. Soon enough, there'll be little more than dead, dry husks, light enough to knock down with a puff of air. That is, unless they get help. Help from the other god wall, presumably. Ask why the gods haven't come to you, too. Why would they want you? You think the gods have any use for a two-bit singer with a parade of unpredictables marching through her head? You may be godwoken, but that doesn't make you worthy. But that doesn't matter, Losa. I saw something special in you. Something they didn't see. That's enough. Ask it what it seems to see in you. Potential. Look what you can do. You can bless. You can see the spirits of the world. When will you believe that all I want is to see you, to see us, succeed? And to be honest, bless is pretty useless. I haven't used bless once in a fight, so... Yeah. I don't see how this uh, is uh, much of potential, but yeah, sure. The Void itself is hunting down the gods, leeching them in ways I only dreamed were possible. Drop by drop, they drain away, and your path forward becomes all the clearer. The gods have gone into hiding within your fellow Godwoken. They seek to become what we are, stronger together, unstoppable together. But we are far ahead of them already. And I know where we must go next. The Well of Ascension. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, Shrek, not really. You're more in the market for an exorcist than a well. Aren't you listening? The well is a pool of pure source in which the powers of the Seven lie united. The Seven? Fools that they are, each gave up half their powers to create the first divine. To bathe in the lake is to become divine. We'll do more than that, though. Feeling thirsty. Well, against a whole lake full of swords? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Thirsty? That's what it's implying. The gods are weak. Weaker than I expected. The Void is nearly here. You need to go to the Well of Ascension and absorb the Source of the Seven. All of it. Then you'll become a god. How does that sound? It sounds pretty tempting, yeah, but I would rather do that without that thing inside me. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Contemplate the idea. That'd make a pretty great god, but not while you're sharing your body with a demon. Without me, <clears throat> you would have died in a shipwreck before you even got to Fort Joy. I have been good to you, Losa. Remember that. The world needs someone to safeguard it against the void. With the powers of the gods, you'll do a great job. Don't you think? This pretty much sounds like this demon too is afraid of the void. I mean, why else would he help me and to uh, to fight the void? That's a good point. Ask it what it thinks its role will be once you're divine. Much the same as it is now. I'll be your advisor, your helpmate. And in return, you'll ensure my survival in the new order of things. For make no mistake, a new order is coming. Hmm, ask what you should do next, if you were serious about ascending. We'll make our way to the lake, but not yet. Not until you've become a true master of the source. You'll need to learn to speak the language of creation itself. It won't be easy. You'll need to find tutors, masters of the source. People who can teach you to increase the volume of source you can control. <laughs> yeah, that is quite literal. Uh, these masters of the source can uh, increase my source points up to three. Three is the max. Few remain, and the ones who do have been driven to the brink of survival. The Order has made certain of that. Still, I have full faith in you, Losa. You'll find them. And you'll convince them to teach you. Once you have, find me here again. We'll move forward from there. Hmm. Say nothing. Take your leave. Till next time, darling. Huh. <sighs> okay. So, our next quest is to find these masters of the source. But let's get back first. The Meister stares intently at you. Her eyes are tired and bruised, but determined. Still alive? Gods above, there might be something to you after all. She leans in, her bloody tongue flickering hungrily about your face. Tell me, what did you see? What do you know? Do I want to tell her the full story? Yeah, probably should. Ignore the burning in your lungs and quickly explain what happened. The presence within you, your new power, and the masters of source. She sighs impatiently as you hack up the last of the green smoke. You can't channel enough source? Gods be damned, why couldn't you have a nice simple problem? Finding an orc to dance the hornpipe, perhaps? Look at her in surprise. She doesn't know what you need to do next? I know exactly what must be done. You must find a master of source. And I could have helped you once, but no longer. The purging which the Magisters included as part of their service was quite efficient. They stripped me of my source. She was purged? But why isn't she a silent monk then? Not enough to silence me, but enough that I would not turn their insides to lime. So, all this time, the Magisters had the power to drain sorcerers of their source, but leave enough in there to not turn them into meat puppets. Yet still they went ahead and turned all the sorcerers in Fort Joy into silent monks. Yeah, the Magisters are, are real assholes, and I believe I will pretty much kill all of them. Enough to sever my link to the font from which all source flows. And certainly enough that I cannot train you. So we must seek alternatives. Alas, the only source masters not yet hauled off to Fort Joy or turn into meat puppets are those too dangerous or cunning for the Magisters to contain. Sorcerers that allowed their power to corrupt them. Many are wicked, cruel, vile and generally not good teacher material, but we may have no others to turn to. Wait. Ask if she's really telling you that you need to go and train under evil sorcerers? You will not be there long, I assure you. There is only so much you can glean from a twisted mind. 
However, it is the path we walk. No, <coughs> no matter what the cost, no matter <sighs> what is asked of you. The Meister doubles over in a violent coughing fit, struggling for breath. After a few moments, she regains her composure, wiping a thin smear of blood from the corner of her mouth. No matter what is asked of you, you must learn from them. You can't hide the concern on your face. She doesn't seem well. And you do not seem to be paying attention. Sorcerers, evil, controlling your source, saving Rivalon, please. <laughs> please tell me at least some of this rings a bell. Your focus, your only focus, must be on finding these masters. On finding the secrets to divinity. Nothing else matters. Ask where you can find these masters. The Magisters have kept ledgers with all known sorcerers. Especially the powerful ones not yet captured. They would be an invaluable resource. But do be careful not to get caught. I was their <coughs> guest for a time. And I promise you the gallows was the most comfortable part of the experience. And if their barracks turns out to be as empty as their skulls, just try to keep an ear to the ground. There may still be powerful sorcerers hiding in these lands. As she speaks, one of her wounds reopens, a dark red stain spreading across her tunic. She hisses in frustration and starts to bind the gash. I wish there was more I could do, but in this condition I would be more a hindrance than a boon. Godspeed. And remember, do whatever it takes. Say that you'll be back as soon as possible. Okay, so, uh, a couple of things happened. Uh, first, we got a little more insight on that thing inside our head. Um, second of all, we uh, know where we must go. We must go to the Well of Ascension and uh, become divine, or rather become a god ourselves. Uh, but to do that, we first have to um, increase our source uh, volume, whatever, by uh, learning under some masters of source, uh, which are around here in uh, Reaper's Coast. We'll just have to find them and get them to teach us. And last but not least, we have learned Spirit Wish. And yeah, if if you activate this, you can, it doesn't cost anything. Except one AP if you do it in fine. Uh, it has no cooldown. You can simply keep that up all the time. And if you do, you see ghosts like this one. Or spirits, more likely. And yeah, they'll have interesting um, dialogue and sometimes they are quest uh, related or whatever. It's just a lot more um, content uh, you get. So keep your eyes open and uh, spirit vision up. And yeah, let's talk to the spirit of the apprentice. Uh, as Meister Siva already told us, she had an apprentice who tried the ritual. Uh, yet she was no god woken, so yeah, she died. <laughs> so let's uh, talk to her. The spirit of an elegant elven woman materializes before you. She seems surprised. You... you can see me. A god woken in my presence. You honor me. Ask why she risked such a thing if she was aware of the dangers. The spirit looks at you regretfully. It is hard to hear of such power and not covet it for yourself. I lie to myself and convince myself that I am special. But I am not special. I am dead. Yeah, quite so. Okay. Um, that's it with Meister Siva. Let's check out the uh, quest log. And here we No, this is not uh, updated. This is updated. If you want to um, read that, go ahead and do so. And then we have Champion of the Gods. And there we go. And okay. Now, while I was shopping, I uh, ran across some stuff. I would do the looting in between episodes. And that stuff was. Uh, wait. Well, over here. There. Um. Yeah, I went over here to <coughs> grab myself a little bit more honey to make some more charming arrowheads. Uh, you... Go ahead and follow those, please. Uh, 
No, it wasn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, as you can see, there's a little bit of blood around here. I came across a grisly scene when I wanted to grab some money. It seems Peepa has hatched. Yeah, there's a ghost nearby, I know. If you use spirit vision, we see the ghost of Big March. It seems Peeper has hatched and all of the other chickens have died for some reason. Did Peeper kill them? He grew up pretty quickly for being an egg, like not even a day ago. Let's talk to Peeper. Okay, and okay, Peeper's running. Okay, Peeper's following me now. <laughs> he thinks I'm his mama. Okay, let's talk to you, the spirit of Big March. Monster, monster! Poor little Peeper! Poor little monster Peeper, baby! There's only one way. Yes, there's only one awk, awk thing to do. Papa! Uh, tell her people when stop following you. It seems uh, to think you're his mother. Then you better be the best mama you can be. Care for people and stroke him and bring him straight to his papa. Ask about this papa. Does she mean people's father? Yes, yes, yes. He wanders. He rock roosts. But he is special. He can help people. Can keep him safe. Ask if you shouldn't put the chick out of its misery, it seems dangerous. What? Fuck? No! Peeper's still just a baby! And Papa can help! Okay. So we've got Peeper with us now. <laughs> uh, let's check out the quest lab. Um, yeah, you can read that. Uh, we have to find Peeper's Papa, who is uh, somewhere. Magic Rooster. <laughs> okay. This is the last sighting of Jayhan. Really? That is the last sighting of Jayhan? Isn't he somewhere around here? Ah, interesting. And Records Cave and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Uh, interesting enough. Yeah, we will uh, visit Papa. But uh, not quite yet. Instead, we'll go to the marketplace. Because, if, as you might have seen, I already I have uh, another new quest in my quest log. This came from talking to one of the people over here accidentally. So, let's uh, catch you up on. Oh, I got that quest. Good. It was by the Idle Beggar. Yeah. Uh, let's drop a you quick save and talk to the idle bag. for a sick dog? A glance at the dog's miserable face tells you it's sick, all right. Ask him what's wrong with the dog. What am I, dog's doctor? Dog's sick. Go on, give us a penny for a sick dog. I'll see if you can pet the dog. Patty for a penny? You can sing him a love song and call him mummy. Take your leave. I don't trust that guy. Well, Let's talk to you. Rusty. The dog lies there quietly, clearly in great pain. What are you looking at? I'm sick here. Get lost. Ask what it. Uh, ask it what it. For oh, fuck's sake, ask it what ails it. Got a pain in the neck. Got a bad pain in the neck. Lay your hand upon its neck. It flinches. A low, threatening growl builds within its throat. Slide your hand beneath its studded collar. Under the collar, you find the sharpened points of metal rivets, gouging the poor dog's skin. The dog bears its teeth at you and growls. Tell the dog that you can heal its pain, but it must trust you. The dog gives you a long, hard stare, but does not bite you. Yet. Turn the collar inside out. The dog goes to bite your hand, and then realizes the pain is gone. Hey, I feel... Okay. Thanks, woman. I think I'll wander off now. Here, before I go, what can I do to show my gratitude? Ask him who put the collar on him. 
Master did. Nothing good. So his master put uh, uh, on a um, studded collar the wrong way around uh, on the dock to make it look sick, so he would get more gold. Ask the dog if he knows what that means. Huh? Uh, wait a minute. Master hurted me? Excuse me a minute. I'm gonna go now. But first, I have a thing I need to do. He turns to his master. You bad man, you! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. See ya, Rusty. Uh, he runs off and uh, Scott. business today. Yeah, let's talk to the Isle Beggar again. Don't want for a grievy beggar whose dog ran away. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. Mention the dog's spike collar. Tell him he's cruel. God damn it. That was my livelihood. Penny for a grieving beggar? I reckon I'm owed it here. Tell him you tell the people what he did. You wouldn't do that, would you? Oh, yes. You would do that, wouldn't you? I couldn't prevail upon you to change your mind, could I? Tell him you want all of his earnings and he can be glad that's all you're asking. <laughs> so I'm robbing a beggar, but an asshole beggar, so fuck it, yeah. I want your money, all of it. He gives you a cool look, then rummages in his pocket. Five he hands bucks. you the contents. That's your look. Go on then, get lost, you freeloader. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he deserved that. Well, keep steady. We extorted the beggar into giving us five gold. Okay. Yeah, that's all I um, did in uh, between episodes. So, uh, we talked to the Meister, we know uh, all the interesting stuff. Um, what we actually should also do is uh, check out the Lost Caravan over here uh, with our spirit vision. There might be uh, some spirits around. But uh, we'll do that next time. And we also have the rest of Driftwood to explore. There is still a shit ton of stuff to do in this city alone. And uh, unlimited number of uh, NPCs to talk to and whatnot. So yeah, we'll be busy in Driftwood for a while, I believe. Um, but anyway, we'll. Uh, I think I'll throw in some excursions in the world in between so that we don't have like three episodes in a row with just talking to people. That would be rather boring, I presume. Um, so, yes. Uh, next time we'll definitely check out the caravan and maybe um, explore the surrounding of Driftwood a little bit too. Thanks for watching and see you next time.